to work more efficiently, this video provides a walkthrough of automating a request and approval process using Microsoft applications. In early 2021, I worked on a stretch project to build a workflow for HR process governance. It took me weeks to search for Power Automate tutorials and support since only separate actions were covered, which I pieced together and was able to replicate for two other use cases. Now, I'm sharing the learnings with you. In this example, the workflow trigger will be the user's change request submitted through a form. The approver will be queried based on the project and request category. Then a notification will be sent for approval while a record is created in the tracker. The approver will receive a notification to click approve or reject with comments, including a reminder if there's no response after two days. Once action is taken, the user will receive an email indicating whether the request was denied or approved. Based on the expected completion date on the request, a follow-up notification will be sent to the user to confirm the change was executed. All data will be recorded in the tracker and a copy of the file will be archived as backup for subsequent reporting by the Program Management Office. As you can see, most of the steps are automated. Before setting up the flow, we'll need the request form, which includes the criteria to query the approver from Excel or a SharePoint list. Ensure that the form is finalized prior to creating the flow since any later modifications will require updates to the tracker and Power Automate. The tracker will contain all fields that will be captured from the form, as well as the approver and follow-up responses. Now that we have all the connecting tools and know where they're stored, let's dive right in. Open Power Automate, then go to Create an Automated Cloud Flow. Name the flow. For the trigger, select When a new response is submitted. Click Create and Sign in if needed. Next, we'll configure each action. Please disregard the connection errors as this is for demonstration purposes. In your environment, ensure that all connections are valid or fixed. Any errors that need to be resolved will appear in the flow checker. For the action, when a new response is submitted, your forms will appear in the drop-down menu. If the form is stored in a Teams channel, get the share link and copy the string after ID equals. Select Enter Custom Value and paste the ID. Click New Step and search for Get Response Details and select the same form. For Response ID, click in the field to select Dynamic Content. You can also collapse this panel. Next, we'll add Get User Profile so the flow pulls the requester's information instead of the flow owner's. From Dynamic Content, select the Form Responder's email. To assign the approver, let's say we have a SharePoint list, so we'll add Get Items. In the drop-down menu, select the corresponding SharePoint site and list. Expand Show Advanced Options. For Filter Query, enter the column name Project equals and in single quotes, Select Project from Dynamic Content. Since we have two criteria, we'll add AND category equals, and in single quotes again, category from Dynamic Content. Make sure the syntax is correct. We'll then create a row and map the fields that will be populated from the form submission and query. Now we need to initialize a variable to set up the approval reminder. Name it Approval Response, select String, then enter the value as In Progress. Next, add a do until loop. Select the approval response variable. Keep the default is equal to and enter action taken. As indicated on the process diagram, a reminder would be automatically sent every one day up to two days. So expand change limits and set the count to two and timeout to P2D, which is ISO 8601 format for two days. Since the following action is related to this do until loop, we'll add an action within the box. Search Start and Wait for an Approval. Select Approve or Reject first to respond since we only need one response. Include a title for the notification, which you can add dynamic content to as well. Assigned to is the queried approver. The details box will contain instructions and the form values for the approver to reference conveniently. A link to the tracker or other material can be included here. Expand Show Advanced Options, then add the requester's email. Notifications are received via email and within Power Automate, which can be added as an app in Teams. 
If the approver should not be able to delegate approval authority, change Enable Reassignment to No. Next, we'll go to Settings and specify P1D or 1 day as the timeout for the subsequent action to run, which is the condition. Expand the ellipses and configure this to run after the previous action is successful or has timed out. For the value, enter the expression to check whether the approval response is empty. If yes, then the set variable is no action and the loop continues with another instance of the approval notification. If no, then the set variable is action taken, so the loop stops, and we can move on to the next action, which is another condition. If the outcome is equal to approve, an automated email will be sent with the original submission as a record, in addition to the approval and any comments, or the rejection and comments indicating the reason. Because we want the requester to confirm the change was executed, we'll send a follow-up notification based on the effective date entered on the form. To send it on a specific date, use the delay until action. Since the form's output is month, date, and year, we'll change it with the format date time function as an expression. A link to those instructions are included in the video's description, which you can use to display dates consistently. Search, start, and wait for an approval. Select Custom Responses, wait for one response. Instead of Approve or Reject, we'll set the response buttons as Change Completed or Incomplete. Enter a title. Assigned to is the requester. The details will include instructions for the requester to respond with the status and any additional actions needed for the project change. Now that we have the remaining input needed, click New Step outside of the nested boxes which applies to the entire flow. Search Update Row. Select the same drop-down items and key from the Add a Row action, then map the last three fields. Lastly, we'll copy the file to an archive folder with the option to replace it or save as a new version. I've also used this workflow as an intake process for mindfulness facilitation requests with an automated calendar entry. Simply add Create Event and include the details to confirm the session for the requester and presenter. The time zone may need to be converted beforehand. A benefit was utilizing the data for program reporting. Finally, test the flow to make sure it works as expected. The flow can be exported if you need to migrate it to a different environment just re-establish all the connections. I hope that was helpful. Feel free to modify the flow for your needs and leave any questions or feedback in the comments. The more we can streamline and simplify processes, the more we can focus on self-care. I invite you to check out Elevating Elements for wellness practices, positive affirmations, and more to come to heal, activate our potential, and enhance our collective life experiences. We'd love to see you there and thank you for watching.